His hands, PB2ET. Almost PB2T, oh, but never mind. This picture was taken in 2013. I did not know I had a future in, in satellite communications uh, ahead, but, well, if you believe in, in Omen, then, uh, well, th this must have been one. Uh, thank you to AMSAT UK for giving me the opportunity to make a short introduction. I have to apologize, it's uh, not a very sexy speech, but I hope it helps when you know me a bit. So, who is PB2T? I uh, got infected <laughs> at the age of 12 and it lasted another 12 years before I got my own license. I uh, played on VHF and UHF for about five years and then it was time to uh, pass my Morse code test, which I did. I'm active as a DXer and a contester. And at a certain point I got involved in the work of our National Amateur Radio Society, Veron. I started as contest manager. Uh, later I became a board member and vice, pri vice president and uh, the role as vice president was a very nice role. I always went a bit too far, but there was a president who could say, well, we apologize, he didn't mean it. And <laughs> so, uh, in 2002, I was elected on the IRU Region 1 Executive Committee, responsible for external relations and external relations meant uh, preparing meetings, uh, ITU meetings and meetings of regional telecommunication organizations. We have four in Region 1 and the most important one being CEPT. Uh, between 2008 and 2014 I served as president of IAU Region 1. Yeah, well then I had to think, can I do this? And there were, I had to apologize for others, also fine. And I was a member of the IAU Administrative Council. In April of this year, I was appointed as the IAU Satellite Advisor as successor of Hans van der Groenendaal, whom you know very well. I think Hans did a tremendous job for over more than 20 years. But staying on so long, that was his only mistake. I earned a living in the Army Signal Corps, where I held positions as Defense Frequency Manager and Project Manager in Satellite Communications. I built two ground terminals, one in the Netherlands and one in the Dutch Caribbean uh, area. And my chief technician, uh, his wife, didn't want him to l be away from home too long, so he said, well, if I can do the one in the Netherlands, uh, can you go to, to Curaçao? I said, of course I will, <laughs> and I had a great time. <laughs> <laughs> so, what is the satellite advisor supposed to do? Uh, my mission is to coordinate satellite activities within IARU and to advise the Administrative Council on satellite mat matters. Where in the past frequency coordination happened just a few times a year, we have seen a tremendous increase in the number of coordination requests. And this is caused by the growing popularity of small satellites not only amongst amateurs, but also in the academic world. And the, yeah, in the academic world. Normally, the satellite advisor is appointed for three years. Further tasks are to represent IARU in ITU, in the satellite community, and the various amateur satellite organizations. Although maintaining a database is part of my task, I have to admit that such a database does not really exist. A 
Attending meetings in ITU in particular, uh, that means that I'm a frequent participant in ITUR Working Party 7B meetings. And that is uh, the forum where small satellites are addressed. Uh, when you look at contacts with the satellite community, one can think of the European Space Agency, universities. Reporting to the IARU Administrative Council on developments, well, actually the only thing the Administrative Council wants to hear is there are no problems. And appointing assistance, I will come back to that uh, later in my uh, presentation. What I learned about appointing assistance, it can also happen that the AC appoints your personal assistant, and that means that you're in trouble. Uh, my predecessor asked for guidelines, and he received guidelines. You need to be very careful if you ask your higher level, level for guidance. You will always hear something that you actually don't want to hear. <laughs> okay, the work uh, will be done with representatives from all three IRU regions. We can only use frequencies that are allocated to the amateur satellite service. And we have to follow the regional band plans. And of course, the band plans of the three regions are not the same. So that makes it a bit more complicated. And then finally, our guidelines mention this database again that is not existing. But we have a plan. So another topic I would like to address is, uh, I think, captured by pest control. We have a growing number of small satellites. And this can easily become a problem. Primarily, it is our task to help real amateurs finding suitable frequencies for their satellite mission. And that works pretty well, although sometimes we have to remind amateurs that they cannot have a financial interest in what they are doing, but normally no problems. Now, operators of non-amateur satellites are also looking at our spectrum. And there is a variety of reasons. It can be the avail availabil availability of components, but an important reason uh, can also be that they don't have to pay any cost recovery when doing the paperwork. Uh, if such a satellite project serves a real commercial purpose, I do have a problem to accommodate those in our spectrum. Uh, there is a gray area and that gray area is educational projects. Uh, we see uh, universities who, uh, who run a satellite project and ask to accommodate that or, or ask for frequencies in amateur spectrum. Uh, normally, we will help those universities because we think that amateur and the first steps in satellite communications are almost the same. Uh, over the years, we, we gained some experience here, uh, and some of those universities, they are, they are cheating. And uh, we need to tell them. Uh, and I think uh, what, what will, will come soon is that we uh, will check on what they promised in the past. Did they really submit their API as they promised to do? Did they really implement the amateur secondary mission as promised? Did they publish 
the information on their telemetry that is decoded or that is encoded, I'm sorry. And well, sometimes they just need a little reminder and uh, then we're back on track. But there is a great opportunity in cooperation between universities and amateurs and we need to all be aware of that because you are, well, probably the first point of contact for these universities, uh, especially in case, if they, in, in case they have no clue about amateur radio. But if we still want to exist by 2040, then cooperation with universities is a must in my view. A point of concern is experimental satellites. And uh, unfortunately we see that, no, unfortunately we have administrations who do not follow the ITU radio regulations. Frequencies for experimental satellites, so those, so those who that do not belong in the amateur satellite service but just want to use amateur spectrum. And as I said, maybe to avoid cost recovery. Uh, if they come up with a request, we normally try to accommodate them because we think it is better to put them in a place where we can have them and that we will tell them, okay, well, do whatever you want and we will not coordinate. <laughs> so we will, we will coordinate, uh, but we have some conditions. If it's uh, an educational or university project, uh, preferably with an amateur as a responsible person, we will help them. Uh, we will also do the coordination if the administration tells, yes, this has to be in amateur spectrum, because ultimately the, um, the administration is responsible for, uh, for licenses. Uh, but uh, the last bullet point, and this is a, a, a difficult thing, uh, we ask if, if number one, uh, bullet number one and bullet number two is not in place, we ask for an acceptable justification on why the application has to be in amateur spectrum. And uh, we had a justification, well, we want to test this uh, warfighter application uh, and uh, it has to be in amateur spectrum, be in, we need to prove a technology. Well, as far as we could see, the, techni the technology was already proven, not by Raytheon, but by, but by another company. And in my opinion, the application had to be in military spectrum. Okay, but uh, uh, there is a way out if this, uh, this comes up then I need to uh, ask the IRU officers uh, for approval. Uh, unfortunately, they ask for advice, so I have to give them uh, the advice first. But uh, I'll, 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 the, these commercial applications, I, I, I will give them a hard time. Right, here is the, uh, the panel with representatives from all three regions. And I'm glad uh, that we have the uh, two Region 1 representatives uh, here, Graham and Mike. I have uh, one plea. If uh, people from AMSAT uh, UK have something with satellites, please to go to Graham. Don't go to, to Colin G3PSM. Uh, that, that's IRU has a matrix organization, so that, you, that means that you can enter the organization from all sides, but Place for satellite business, go to Graham and uh, he will channelize uh, those, uh, those, uh, those stuff. Uh, two representatives from the US, one from uh, Brazil, and in region three we have a, a Japanese and a Chinese uh, amateur uh, covering uh, that. We uh, meet uh, in a teleconference when necessary. Uh, earlier this year, we had uh, one or two meetings a week. 
and we now meet once every two or three weeks and I think that is, uh, that, that, that is enough. Uh, there are four special advisors, uh, people who were very active in the past. Uh, they still get all the information we have and if they feel uh, it's necessary they, they, will, they will respond, which is good. Um, then, finally, or almost finally, some words on, uh, on advanced publications. Uh, submitting an API to the Inter International Telecommunication Union is a mandatory process. Also for amateur satellites. In Appendix 4 of the radio regulations, you can find what data fields must be populated. It looks complicated and the first time you do it, it is complicated. But it is more or less the same information that we require for our IRU frequency coordination. Uh, since 2014, we, IRU, request that the API A number is provided. And it helps us if there is an API number. Uh, those of you who, uh, who uh, followed the, uh, the World Radio Communications Conference 2015 may have noticed that there uh, is an agenda item for uh, small satellites, for uh, space operations, a spectrum for small sp satellites. Two meters was one of the candidate bands. And when we had a discussion, I uh, showed uh, the meeting that we had 150 entries for the two meter bands in, in the ITU register. And there were only four entries for other satellites in, in, in parts of the spectrum that were allocated for space operations. So I said, well, why would you want to check two meters if you only have four entries in, in, in no, that was not 70, that was 130 something uh, megahertz. Uh, and it, yeah, 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 okay. So two meters was off the list. Uh, 70 centimeters, more or less the same story, but there I, I, I kept my mouth shut and let the military do the work. So, and that was, uh, that was better. So. No two meter candidate bands, no 70 centimeter candidate bands. And that is because we submitted APIs. As far as I'm aware, the UK amateurs uh, do well. UK satellites uh, are being registered and I would say just carry on here. So what's the plan for the coming months? Uh, I'm still busy to implement and use the rules and guide guidelines that we have. Uh, with people on the team who, uh, who have been on that team for a long time, it's not always easy to, uh, to make that change. But we will make that change. A big concern I have is our IT support. The remailer that the ARL offers is worse than the bulletin board systems that we know from the 1980s. The remailer is not reliable and we have no database and no planning tools. A first step is, that to, move, is to move to a reliable remailer and to set up a repository of all coordination letters. And I think we can make the life of satellite operators easier by allowing them to submit their space cap files instead of the IRU form. I don't know if you know what that means, but I think the ones who submitted APIs 
they know what they should know what space cap is. And I see at, li at least one thumb up in the back of the room. So, okay, two thumbs up. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, on planning tools, I do not have a clear solution yet, but maybe integration with the systems used by ITU is a, is a possibility. And that's all. Thanks for your attention. Ready to take questions. Thank you. Thank you, Hans. You sound like the man. <laughs> Have we got? I'm, I'm not doing this for twenty. I'm not doing this for twenty years. I, I need a successor. Uh, so. well, yeah, yeah. we'll talk about that. Have we got? <laughs> have we got any questions from the floor, please? Thank you. With due respect, one of the things that I notice you say in the requirements there. It's, it's for a preference to be operated by a radio amateur, not mandatory. <laughs> it's a preference that's actually stated there, not mandatory. One of these problems I have is that um, within the amateur band, we have how much am satellites being operated don't have an amateur designation. And it's because, I know the reasons behind it, I'm sure we all do, because the, uh, in North America they won't get that allocation as an amateur satellite unless it's managed and everything else. But the others that's going in there are now required to actually look after it and manage it themselves and put out the information. What we don't know is radio amateurs, and it's getting confusing, is whether these satellites are on or off or where they are because the satellites operating with the amateur band <laughs> that we don't have any uh, information on. Thank you. In the ideal world, we can just check the ITU database, look for the API, and find the satellite. Uh, that's another reason for, uh, for registration. Uh, the, 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 thing, well, the things you mentioned uh, are, I think, caused by the fact that each administration has its own explanation of the radio regulations. And the explanation by Ofcom may not be the explanation by the FCC. And that is why in, in 2012 uh, we, 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 we produced a report on, uh, on current practice. And a sentence I remember uh, is on uh, the practice of experimental satellites, uh, which was debatable. Uh, even agreed by the United States of America that uh, their practice was debatable. But unfortunately, we cannot set, say it's for, it, it is forbidden. So it is debatable and we have to live with it. Okay, thank you. Are there any more questions? Mike has Mike. one. Mike sometimes helps in ITU meetings, not always, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, that depends, doesn't it? <laughs> Who I'm working for at the time. So, um, one of the issues we have on two meters is that we've got about 200 kilohertz worth of bandwidth, and it's getting very busy. We're getting lots more amateur satellites, we're getting transponders, um, and we're getting now higher data rate downlinks. So, what is your view of what's going to happen in the future uh, to address that problem? Um, we uh, allocated another 25 kilohertz uh, in, at the bottom part of two meters. Uh, I think when it, well, there needs to be a, a, a signal from the satellite advisor to IARU, hey guys, it's getting, uh, it's getting busy and we want more, but this is something that, uh, be, be, uh, Allocation-wise, it's easy. Uh, two, uh, 144 to 146 is uh, amateur and amateur satellite, and it is just we well we, we limit ourselves uh, by sticking to our band plans, and it's uh, the IARU regions that uh, that can change their band plans. Uh, so, will there be a proposal from RSGB to the coming Region 1 conference for more satellite spectrum? 
<laughs> You're in the country where we've had the interference from uncoordinated subcommittee meetings, of course. Yeah. But you still owe me uh, a report of harmful interference, Murray. I never received that, so I don't believe you. No, 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 no. I, uh, you, you, you're just whining, but you, you don't submit anything. No, 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 you didn't. Okay, thank you. I, I had arrangements with the Chinese to that they would receive this report of harmful interference, but well, I, had to, I had to say, sorry, guys, it's not coming. Not just the Chinese, it's our American <laughs> friends as well. Leave him. <laughs> Come on. Okay, thank you. I think we've got our man here. Show our appreciation again. Thank you. You're brilliant.